I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, so I'm just going to introduce myself um, real fast. I am Audrey Shoemate. I am a Texas administrator, um, have been for the last eight years. Um, been to Ron Clark, introduced the half system at my own campus. But today, um, what we really want to focus on is Josh White. Uh, he is a principal at Hawkins Elementary. And as an AP, um, brought in law school and the house system. So really want to hear his story and open it up for questions at the end of it. Um, we are, uh, this is a 30 minute webinar. So we want to be very respectful of your time. Like Josh and I were just talking about, you don't have enough time in the day as it is already. Um, but if you don't mind, um, dropping in the chat where you guys are from, that would be amazing so that we can see where everybody um, is coming from. But more importantly today, um, for the next 30 minutes, we're just educators helping educators, administrators helping other administrators. Um, Josh and I have done this ourselves and just any way that he or I can help you guys um, start something new um, or just um, up your game with something that you're already doing, anything that we can do in this 30 minutes to help you, please feel free to let us know. But without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Josh White, who is principal at Hawkins Elementary. Thanks so much for being here, Josh. Yeah, thank you. So good morning to everybody. Um, just real quick, a little bit about myself. I actually probably had the weirdest path ever to being an elementary principal. I was a high school varsity basketball coach and even uh, coached six years at the collegiate level, um, men's basketball. And somehow I'm here in Hawkins as an elementary principal. I've uh, been in administration for, I think, going on nine years now as an assistant principal at uh, Pine Tree Middle School in Longview, and then I uh, was hired on as assistant principal here at Hawkins, and I'm um, in my third year as principal. Um, that background is kind of interesting because when we, we, we were a blue ribbon school for closing the gaps a few years ago, and we'd felt like we had really finally made that jump. We'd made that. We got the academics fixed. We had the growth and everything was there and we wanted to take that next step on. Uh, we, we were still dealing with some some classroom management and discipline issues on the campus and uh, we were just trying to brainstorm ways to what we, what we could do to fix that. And um, of course, everyone's heard of the Ron Clark Academy. There's a, I know there's a school down in Central Texas that has done this and we kind of looked into it and uh, we met with our staff in the spring, uh, and, you know, we, we talked about it, said, this is kind of what we're thinking. And we weren't real sure on buy-in, you know, you always want to get by on your teachers, but I think, you know, being at an elementary school, I have so many Harry Potter fans that when, when you kind of made that connection, they really jumped on board with it. So, um, it's kind of a daunting task, but that's where live school came in. When we started doing a research, we, we got on and we saw the, the capabilities of what live school does. And, you know, we started with, we, we got buy-in from the staff and then, um, we were going to implement it the next year. And we started off with a big, big celebration with our, we brought in all the staff and all of our students and um, everyone on our campus is, is a member of a house. We have three houses and that's what we decided to go with. And, uh, we bring in, we brought everyone in and, and live school was really great because it initially to get started, we weren't sure how on earth were we going to get kids in a house. So we, live school does that for you. We put all the kids in there and it just randomly started picking kids and throwing them in the houses. And that very first initial meeting we had we introduced every single kid and brought them up to the stage we had uh the the lays that were the colors of the houses every, every kid got a lay and they got the the clappy hands and and a, and a shirt so we had shirts made had a big celebration and you know the way we set it up we we the students earn points for themselves, but those points also earn points for their house. And you can see on the slide there, um, this is um, a snapshot of where we were kind of towards the end of last year. And uh, as you can see, we, we use it. There's a lot of points being given out, but that kind of ties back to what I said earlier, even though 
you know, even as a high school basketball coach, kids want to be rewarded. And I had a reward system very similar. You know, all of my varsity players had a board with their name on it when they did something good in a game or something above and beyond. They got they got a sticker to go on that board. And I, I think kids all intrinsically want to be rewarded. And it doesn't take much. You know, we, we assume they just – we got to do something big and extravagant for them. And the reality is that's not really the case. I mean, our kids get excited about the littlest things just because they don't get that at home in a lot of cases, or they don't have that experience outside of school. But, um, we, we, uh, we give points for various things. I mean, it's everything from completing study plans to just good behavior to, to a number of things. And it's really great because we we have a we have a television in our hallway that has that that uh the points that rack up and it's live and the kids walk by and they can see those the the numbers going up when they walk by and i'll stand outside right by that tv as kids are moving to and from class or to the lunchroom and every one of them every day walk by oh we're winning or we're we're behind we got to do something to to catch up but <clears throat> um it's just been a great system for us. Uh, you know, we were just missing that piece on building some community and some camaraderie, not just with the students, but our staff as well. And we've seen our staff grow closer because we'll have house meetings or house competitions and those teachers get together and they're across different grade levels. They might not get to see each other as much during the day, but when we have a house celebration or house competition, they get with their house and they get to celebrate together. Um, and we have seen, it has been really good. I mean, we do a lot of other, you know, um, reward systems and, and PBIS things, uh, as well along with this, but, um, we have seen, I, I don't have the numbers in front. We've seen a dramatic drop in, in office referrals and behavior because they really want to work for those points and they want to work for those rewards. And we've we spend our budget, you know, we have a budget for student incentives and we have built, uh, we have a store basically. And those kids at the end of each nine weeks get to go shopping with their points. And, you know, you have kids that they see the other kids getting a lot and they go to the store and get to buy the really cool stuff. And some of them don't, it's motivated them to, to earn those points and have better behavior and work a little harder in school to earn those points so they can have those same opportunities to go into the, into the store and, and buy things. So, um, it's, it's just been a wonderful thing. And, and the live school has really helps with that because it does all that for you. And our teachers will have live school open up a lot of, you know, our teachers all have Promethean boards and they'll have that up and they're, they're given points throughout the day. And those kids are seeing their name on there and they're seeing, them gain those points and that stuff is added into their accounts and um it just gives them just that satisfaction that you know they normally wouldn't have so um i know that's a very brief fast overview of of what we do um but it, it's just been a it's really been a game changer for us and um live school made that so much easier because they built the houses for us to initially get started and now when we have our pre-K students come in, those are the only students we have to put into a house and we can do that manually ourselves because there's just fewer kids to have to worry about. And we'll start every school year off the first week. We'll have our, we'll have a house celebration. Everyone will come in, they'll sit with their house and then we'll introduce all the new kids. And even the new kids that move in, it's not just pre-K kids because we'll have, you know, other grade level students that move in. And, uh, we'll do, we'll celebrate them. We'll give them, give them, you know, a shirt for their house and, uh, we'll have a big competition where, you know, each house can earn points through the competition. We'll do just fun little games and activities with them. And, uh, uh, it's just been, it's just been great for us. And we're, we're in, I believe year five of using this and, uh, you know, it's a highly recommended, I would, you know, it's just, like I said, it's been a game changer for us. Yeah, I think um, probably more than anything, it changes your whole culture. 
I mean, even, I mean, just even looking at this picture, I mean, I see your teachers in there too. So, I mean, your teachers get just as. Yeah. You know, it, we were worried at first about the buy-in on that. Cause you know, we, we, before we do any initiative, we try to get teacher buy-in, but the buy-in was amazing. They, they were, they jumped in on it, you know, head first, they couldn't wait to get started. And so it gives them a sense of, you know, a, a team to be a part on along with the students and, and the students now connect with those teachers as well. Cause they're in the same house. So they're always pushing each other and, you know, rooting each other on. And, you know, uh, Thursdays is house day. So we encourage the kids to wear the shirt that we gave them or just their house colors. And we kind of celebrate that way. And if they wear something colors that we give them five points for the day and, you know, first period, all right, you got your, you got your green on today or you got your purple or your yellow. And, th and that just gets them to, to, uh, get involved that way. And it's, it's like you said, it, it's been great for our campus and our campus culture. And now that we're in, you know, we're in that time of year where we've got staff that are leaving and we're hiring new people and when I tell them in the interview that we do that, they just light up. They're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, and, and they can't wait to jump in on, I think that's their favorite thing is, oh, we get to be a part of a house and we get to do that stuff. So yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been a phenomenal change for us. Um, so we've got a few questions, um, in the chat. So that will kind of guide a little bit of some of your conversation too. There is a lot of questions, and and I even had this too about the rewards. I mean, I I don't know about you, but I reward myself with a coffee every night I me in, or you know, I mean, I I reward myself with things. Um, but um, you know, the overall question that's always going to be asked is, you know, what do you put in your store, and how do you fund it? Well, we, we, we budget every year. We've always had a student incentive budget. And then I also, we do fundraisers and, and uh, we'll, we'll buy quite a few things, but we will have everything from little trinkets, erasers, pins that are, that are super cheap and affordable for the kids all the way up to, we have Nintendo switches where the kids, if they get two or 3000 points, they can purchase a Nintendo switch or scooters. Um, it's you, and you don't even have to do that. And like I said, it, the kids get excited over just, I kind of laugh with my AP as like they get excited over some of the silliest things, but that's, that's what kids are and that's what they want. And just, just, they have the opportunity to go in there and buy something and they don't even care what it is. It's just, Oh, there's something I got, I got points and I can go buy that. So we'll, we'll put basic erasers or school supplies or colored pencils, things that some of them need. And then we'll go all the way up to, to, you know, basketballs and footballs and soccer balls and jump ropes. And, and you can really do as much or little with it as you want. It's just, you know, everyone's going to have a different budget and I understand that. And we put a little bit more into that. We sacrifice in some other places because it, it's important for us to give this opportunity to the kids and, and shoot for that. And having those bigger prizes, a lot of kids, you know, it's really great because our math teachers, they teach financial literacy and they use live school and their accounts to teach that because you can print off basically a bank statement at the end of each nine weeks to send home to the kids and their parents can see, oh, you've got all of these points. What are you going to get with your points? Well, I want this. Well, let's talk about saving. So if you want to save for that, should you buy something now or should you wait? So the real world aspect that you can tie into it as well is, is really big. And it, we've seen that pay off as well. You know, kids really, they shoot for the short-term goals and then they got their long-term goals. Oh, I want that big I want that big prize at the end of the year. So, yeah. Well, and some of the prizes, I mean, you would be shocked to see that, you know, you could, you could say, come, come spend a half a day or even an hour with the principal. I mean, sometimes just getting a different environment. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's a big one too. We'll let the kids, that's one of the big prizes. They can be principal for the day, teacher for the day. They can get an extra lunch. They can get an extra 30 minutes of recess. You know, there's, you can get very creative with this. I mean, it doesn't have to be an actual physical object. I mean, you can, 
there's so many things throughout the day that you can you can use for that kind of stuff and and our, our kids love it i mean I, to my surprise i mean they'd rather be principal for the day or get an extra recess more than they would a nintendo or a scooter or something you know that that's just to get to experience that for them is something that's more important than the physical objects so you can get very creative with it there's so many things you can i mean some uh, some of my teachers offer a free homework pass. Like, okay, well, you get so many points, you don't have to do this homework and get a hundred for that for the day or or anything like that. Okay, tell me about um, like house games. How often um, house meetings, and then do you do a reward for the whole house that wins by semester? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we we try to meet. We try to have a house celebration in games once per grading period. Um, originally, we really had high hopes of doing more um, than, than COVID hit. You know how that changed everything. So gathering that many people in a space became practically impossible. But um, we try to have one, one per, per grading period. So we're on a nine-week grading period. So we have one each nine weeks. We come in, we have music playing, all the teachers are wearing their stuff, the kids have their stuff, we just get them excited. And then we'll just do something small. We have like a free throw shooting contest. So we tell, all right, each house send one student per grade level to come up and we'll do a free throw shooting contest. And whoever makes the free throws wins for the day and they get 700, no, they get a thousand points for their house. Second place gets 750 and third place gets 500. So even if you know, we give points for all three places, even though we only have three. If you come in last, you're still going to get points for that. And uh, we have uh, some banners up in our hallways. And uh, we have a big board that says, let the games begin. We, we ordered banners for each of the houses and their logo. And we got them hanging there. And at the end of the year, the house with the most points, they have a trophy that kind of goes with them. So we'll turn the TV off about the last three or four weeks so the kids don't really know yeah. where the points are we kind of start building it up and then that last house comp or you know competition and meeting at the end of the year we reveal the winner and they, they get the trophy and it gets put up above their banner for the year and the kids go crazy over it and get all excited and they have the the pride of walking around the next year that our house was the winners you know and and we get where uh, one of the things we're going to start is we're going to try to give something for each person in that house for winning that trophy. So it's not just the trophy, we're gonna give them something to go along with that. So it gives them a little individual reward as well. I've, I've seen it before where they made like a wall of fame and um, I know we used it, but we did it by the semester. So we had a yeah. semester winner every time, but they would put up there, you know, each house that won in the semester that they won. I thought that was really neat. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we could even make a list of house games because um, we did ours by the grading period too, and just the different games that you could play. Because sometimes that's the hardest part of of coming up with something. I know um, one of the best ones that we ever had, very simple, cost us zero dollars. Was have you ever played Singo? I don't guess so. It's like a bingo board, but it's got um, uh, songs in the it's got song titles in the block and then you play a song and they have to mark it off and so I, we did a disney version of it and i had okay. every kid in my campus like on the gym floor with their bingo uh -huh. and it was they loved it but it was just something simple and something so free um yeah yeah and, and like you said you can get very creative you don't have to do anything crazy it costs you money like at christmas we did a christmas themed party and it was blindfolded the kids and they had to scoop snowballs, which was cotton balls from one bowl to another while they're blindfolded, you know. And we also incorporate like that's the one of the times during the skill day we want the kids to be loud, be excited and have a great time. So we'll start off with we'll give points to the loudest house. We'll give each house a chance to scream and yell, but we'll also you know, we have a, our campus wide attention getters, give me five. And we'll also, we'll let them scream and yell and we'll say, give me five in the, the house that can get quiet and get back organized again the quickest. We'll, we'll give them points for that. And when we, when we exit for the day that, you know, the grade level or the houses that 
exit the quietest and the best lines that we, we reward them. So there's always opportunities to give points and award students um, through good behavior and, and then, but having fun in the games as well. Do you guys start it on like the first day of school? Like is your sorting day or anything like that? Is that on the first day or tell me a little bit about that? So typically um, we usually start on, Typically, school starts on a Wednesday for us. We'll start on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we'll have that first weekend. We typically will do it one of those first three days. So we will go around. Um, since the houses are already pretty much sorted, we'll we'll see what our enrollment is with our pre-K and our new kids. And then we'll make sure that our houses are, even as possible, we'll start to populate the houses with the new kids. And then that Thursday or Friday, uh, around 2.30, we'll have our first house celebration of the year, and that's when we bring everybody into the gym where we introduce all the new kids to the campus and tell them what house they're in and celebrate and go crazy for a little bit. But, yeah, we start um, once everyone is in a house. That following week, we start we start, we start, start giving points. You start earning points. Um, and, and, yeah, it, it, we start real quick. We don't we don't waste any time with that because we we want them to start immediately getting rewarded and and hopefully pushing that continued good behavior and hard work. Do your students stay in the same house the whole way yep. through? Yep, whatever house they go into, if they start as a pre K student and they're in Da Vinci, they stay in Da Vinci, and that way they they build that camaraderie and. They get to stay together and they're a team their whole elementary career. Um, like I said, you obviously always get kids that move in. And if we have kids that move in in November, when we have our second house party for that nine weeks, we, we introduce them. You know, we make sure to introduce them and celebrate them uh, no matter what time. But yeah, once once they're in that house, that's the house. Same with the teachers. Um the teachers that are on staff that have been with us some, since the very beginning, we're all in the same house. I'm in the house of Da Vinci, so that's been my house from day one. And that will, as long as I'm here, that will always be my house. Yeah, that's one of the things that Ron Clark talks about is just that sense of belonging. And he says, you know, that's why, you know, people get into even gangs is because they just want that sense of belonging. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know, um, you know, when it came time for like star review or test prep or even just tutoring, we would have some of our older kids in the same houses help some of the younger kids. So just to kind of build that up, I mean, just absolutely. Anything. Yeah, we did a lot of that. Um, and I will say this, I'll kind of backtrack a little bit. When you see House of Atlas, Da Vinci, Leo, the staff, we did not come up with those names. When we built our houses the very first time, we brought all the kids into different areas. We blocked off some time that day and we let them come up with the name of their house and the colors that they wanted. So you get way more buy-in from the kids. And so of course we had adults, you know, whatever house we were in, we were in that meeting with them and we were kind of leading them to make sure they stayed on, on, you know, on the course, but it was all up to the kids. We let them brainstorm what they wanted to call their house and why, you know, so um, it, it is just total buy-in and it gives those kids a chance to have some say so in something. We were, we were seeing kids speak up and give ideas that normally don't ever say anything, you know, but it's like, Hey, this is mine. This is part of, this is going to be part of who I am, my career through Hawkins elementary. So you get, you, it was very surprising to see some kids speak up. You're like, I, I, I didn't know if that kid could talk or not. <laughs> okay. So we have a question and this is kind of one of those, everybody does it a little bit different. I know Ron Clark doesn't do it, but do you do a, um, can your houses lose points? Do you do that? We have it set up where students can lose points, but it doesn't take away from the house. Um, their house points stay the same. Um, you know, we, we have a tiered discipline program for for the minor classroom infractions. We call them sign-ins. So they, they get so many sign-ins that it turns into an office referral. Some of the teachers, and I'm okay with this, they, and it's a pretty big chunk, but they like, okay, I'll take your sign in away, but it's going to cost you 50 points. Cause it could be that next sign in could be leading towards an office referral. 
and they got to make that decision. Ooh, do I want to, do I want to spend that money to stay out of trouble or do I take my trouble and take my chances? But yes, we will, we will on occasion, you know, for really poor behavior, the teachers may knock a point or two, you know, it's not a lot. We're not, you know, we don't want to totally deflate the kid, you know, it's like, oh, I got caught talking out of turn and I've lost 50 points for that, you know? So they, they'll uh, have it up there and say, okay, well, you've lost, um, you lost a point because you, I asked you not to talk out of turn. You're talking out of turn again. So we, we do that in conjunction with our tier discipline program. So you can use it. We, we use it both ways. We can take a point or two, or we can say, Hey, you know, I keep you out of the office, but it's going to cost you and they got to make a decision and then they got to decide, okay, I got, I got to act better moving forward. Good. Very good. Um, let's see. Do you put siblings in the same house? Or do you just let it be random? We actually try to split them unless we have a an older or younger sibling that maybe they really need that sibling to be there with them to kind of help. You know, um, you got to be kind of strategic with that. Um, <laughs> if we, we have a, some younger kids that are a little bit more rowdy or discipline problem and their their older sibling can kind of help keep them calm. Yeah. We'll put them in the same house, but, uh, typically we do try to split them up because we don't want them to rely on each other. And it kind of builds a little bit of competition with them at home too, you know, and, and with, with each other. So sometimes that that's not a bad, you know, have a little competition is not always a bad thing. Yeah. I know we did, um, we do balloons, we do black balloons and we buy the little, um, silicone bracelets in their color mm -hmm. so the bracelets are in the balloons and they have to pop it. Um, and so it's totally random, whatever balloon that they, get. but sometimes at the end of the sorting day, um, when you see that and you, you don't put them where they need to go sometimes, yeah. like, oh my gosh, what did I do? <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. I think, I think that either way, you know, you're, you, you've got some pros and cons either way. Um, Absolutely. Well, um, that's the end of our 30 minutes. So right. again, I know that flew by, didn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I know that we could talk about this so much more and there are so many more ideas that I know other people have and we do too. Um, Josh and I were just talking um, before this started about um, possibly presenting um, some things next year at our principal conference in the state of Texas, but I mean, this can be done anywhere. Um, thank you so much, Josh, for spending your time with me this morning. I, I yeah. know how much how well, your time precious. I'll go ahead. If, if anybody wants to reach out to me directly, uh, my email is Joshua, J-O-S-H-U-A dot white, W-H-I-T-E at Hawkins, I-S-D dot O-R-G. So I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, Josh, I'll put that in the chat. Okay. Right. Josh, I'm also going to, when we get this recording done, um, we're going to edit some of the first part of it out um, where we were talking, but um, I'm going to send this out to everybody that registered today, but I'll put okay. my email address in there as well as, as well as yours. Um, again, for any of y'all that, that weren't here at the beginning, um, I am a principal consultant for a lot of schools. So been here, done this as well. Um, and would be happy to be a cheerleader or to help you through um, any of those questions that you guys had as well. Josh is absolutely amazing. So Josh, I'll put your email on your email address in that email as well. So Sounds good. Can I just Thank hop in really quick. If um, just for everyone to know, you will be getting an email after this webinar by end of the week with a recording that will be available. Um, and I'm also going to drop a link in where you can find that recording as well if you want to go back and watch or if you missed a little bit um, in the beginning. Yep. Thanks so much, Josh. Thanks yeah, for, you bet. Thank you. Thanks for helping other educators. and Absolutely. May the odds be ever in your favor with testing. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> See you later. Thanks so much. Uh-huh. Bye. Bye-bye. Um... Mickey, if you can drop your email for me, um, I can get that sent over to you if you don't mind so that we can let you see the app in use. Awesome. Thank you so much. Leslie, go ahead. Oh, I can't. She can't talk. <laughs> That's my fault. Hold on. Let me let me let her talk. 
um, allow to talk. There we go. Leslie, if you unmute, you should probably, you should be able to speak. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. <laughs> this is a little difficult to navigate on the phone because I'm used to doing it on my computer. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> so please forgive me. If you see a weird uh, screen thing for me, that is courtesy of my son. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> we can just hear you. Oh, so I missed some noodles of good stuff stuff. And um, so I don't want to hold everybody up to kind of ask, you know, like for a recap. Um, but I have been interested in trying to um, do something different with my school culture. Um, I am a second year principal. And, you know, it's been a bit of a struggle because my school environment is changing and shifting. And I'm trying to think outside of the box to think about what I could do to sort of, um, we still got a good number of kids that are trying to toe the line, but then we've got a even larger number of kids that are trying to push boundaries. And so sometimes it seems, you know, like, you know, the kids want to do the right thing, but they see what's happening over here with this group. And, you know, sometimes it entices them to want to get on board. And so I do like this concept of the different houses because I, I like that it holds the accountability piece and that um, it also gives them opportunities for reward with, you know, hey, if you're following, you know, walking in a straight line with your class, that helps to earn um, the points. So I just kind of wanted to get some understanding. I was trying to pick up on what Joshua was saying, but how do you determine the houses? Because it didn't seem like it was by grade. It seemed like it was by some cluster of groups of kids. So just wanted to kind of get an understanding of that and how individual and group points worked. Um, well, I can speak from my experience. Um, I was a, a campus administrator um, for eight years um, okay. and stepped out of, of the administrator role. I have two boys this year that are seniors, so I needed I needed to be a mom for a minute, but um, I'm there with you. <laughs> I can say um, that um, we did the house system for seven years. Um, I was a campus of fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, but um, have also helped on an elementary campus where it was K through five. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, I like it where it's all the way across um, the campus and they're all in different groups. Um, a lot of times I would take one grade level, a higher grade level, and a lower one, let's say fourth and second um, or fifth and third, um, and pair them up based on their houses. They really can come together. And if you've ever seen an older child try to help a younger child do something because they're an expert at it already in, in the board, right? They mm -hmm. really get some ownership out of that. And always helping other people is going to bring joy to you. But I will say this more than anything, when you have behavior problems, if you don't funnel that somewhere, they're going to find a place for it. Right. So, I mean, having some competitions, having, you know, our PE teacher, used it daily. I mean, everything that she did, whether they were doing pickleball or whether they were doing volleyball or whether they were learning a new sport, everything is based on those houses. Um, so it, it really kind of comes from your teachers and it being everywhere in your school. And that culture is what drives your kids' excitement. Um, I will say when I put together a pilot group, like my leadership team, it wasn't my academic leadership team. It was a team of teachers that were re very excited about it and wanted to do some really cool things with it. But I also brought in the negative Nancy's too. Um, if you bring in one or two of those, they can't help but get on board. And if you get them on board and they have some ownership in it, now you've won your whole campus. So um, I would say that if you're planning on starting something like this, bring in both sides. Um, and you'll be amazed at what happens not only in your teacher culture, but what happens in your students as well. And don't forget that sometimes 
those house games can be teachers only. And the kids go absolutely bonkers when they get to sit in the stands and watch their teachers, whether it's dodgeball or <laughs> anything like that. They go bonkers for it. So, I mean, it truly is a culture change. It, 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 it just is. It does it on its own. And Audrey, if I can jump in, I think you asked, you know, how do you set them up? There's, I dropped a link in the chat that might be useful for you. There is a a wrong way to do it. You can do it by grade. We have something within live school that will sort it randomly for you. You can do a custom where you go in and you hand pick where each of those students will go. So it really is adaptable to your campus and your needs. Um, So there, it's not a one size, you know, it, it's going to be different based on, based on your school. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would love to be able to pick your brains because <laughs> I, I see that there's a lot of planning that kind of needs to go yeah. into this as well. It's not it, like, a, oh, let's just start this tomorrow. Well, that's <laughs> what we're here for. Um, <laughs> do you mind dropping your email into the chat and then we can set up Ooh. some time and really get you as much support and information that, that you could need. Oh my gosh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Just okay. drop your email in and I will have someone reach out to you today. And okay. And administrators need cheerleaders too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'm going to give you my personal email. I use my work email to um, register for this. Okay. So if that's okay, I give you my personal one. Okay. Whatever okay. works for you, as long okay. as we can reach you. <laughs> okay thanks so much for your question and thank you so much i mean anybody else that's still on here if you have any questions i mean my email address is still on the screen um please reach out to us um jordan is the same thing jordan at live school um inc. Dot, dot com so i mean anything that we can do to help you guys otherwise you'll get a recording of this and our email addresses and we'll help you any way that we can thanks so much for joining us today thanks guys Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful session. Thank you for joining.